And they, and they, they put on a smile that fast. That's not trustworthy. I want somebody to cry some. I want them to say, when I say, how you doing? We'll say, well, man, it's rough. I've been struggling with sin. Man, I had a hard time this week. It's okay to get depressed. Paul was depressed. He said, I was pressed out of measure. I despaired of life. It's okay. And it's okay to tell somebody that. We're not talking about going around crying all the time over your problems. We're talking about just saying, it's been rough this week. But I'll get through it. Just pray for me. Had this problem and this problem. It's okay to be that way. But the world says it's not okay. Just be positive all the time and smile all the time and say, I'm great. That's just not true. That's never true. That's called Tony Robbins' uh, motivational speech therapy. It's just not true. Don't believe those guys. Tony Robbins is a phony. Has anybody figured that out yet? Have you ever met anybody that went to Tony Robbins' seminars that got rich like him? Ever met anybody? I never met anybody. Jim, a long time ago, you said something about nice being derived from the word act. From what? That word of nice being the meaning to act. Well, no, if you act nice, see, nice means no knowledge. If you act nice, you're pretending you don't know and you're playing dumb. Everybody that plays dumb says, gosh, I didn't know. I, I told a real estate broker, I said, one time I said, you know how some real estate agents will kind of twist things? He said, I've never known anyone that way. You liar. <laughs> Why would phony say something like that? <laughs> it's just, I can't believe a grown man would say that, you know. But people will pretend, I've never known a crook in my life. I've never seen anything wrong. I love everyone. Yeah, yeah, you're going to hell too. <clears throat> anyway, now back over to the spirits in prison. Look over here. Spirits in prison. I don't know how long it'll take to get through this. He says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Put to death and quickened. And quickened. How often are we put to death? Daily. Luke 9.23. Luke 9.23. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. But you don't just go out and get a cross out of the clear blue sky. You have to study this word. You have to have a hunger for it. And after you really learn some of these truths, you go out and tell somebody, God doesn't love everybody. He loved his wife, the church, and gave himself for her and nobody else. Boy, people would have killed you for that. They'll put you on a proverbial figurative cross. A daily cross was a metaphor right it's a metaphor it didn't mean somebody literally crucifies you it means you are put on a figurative cross and you're going to be crucified and separated from the world and put to death as far as the world's concerned because death thanatos means separation it doesn't mean annihilation so the world's going to separate from you and you're going to die daily but how long does it take you to learn to die daily God had to put me through 20 years of just beating me in the head with a ball bat saying, you're not going to be rich, you're not going to be famous, you're going to follow me, you understand me. He stuck me in the hospital and I thought I was dying. I said, yes, sir. You're right. I'm wrong. Unless you come to a place you say, I am wrong. God, I'm going to follow you and do what you say. I've tried it my way. I'm sick and tired of me and my old ways. You have to come to that. If you never come to that, you don't know God, you will spend eternity in hell. Every man has to have a cross. Jesus said, if you don't bear your cross, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Luke 14, 27, if you do not bear your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. You must have a daily cross. Without one, you can't go to heaven. You can't be a follower of Christ. And if you're not a follower of Christ, and you're not a disciple of Christ, you're not going to heaven. So you better find out what a daily cross is. That would scare the life out of me if I'd have heard somebody say that when I was a kid. Without a cross, Jim Brown, you're going to hell one day. You better find out how to get one. It sure should scare all of us, shouldn't it? Well, no, you get only believers have a daily cross. 
Only believers have one. That's what Jesus said. All these other people say, well, I guess that's my cross to bear. Uh, yeah. My son's a drug addict. And they're not even a believer. Right. That's my cross to bear behind them a rent. No, that's not a cross. A cross is something you had to be condemned to in the first century. That is what matures us. Uh, the more people kill us, huh? That's right. We're condemned to live in the truth. That's right. We have to live in it. We have to be condemned to a cross. Without one, there is no eternal life for anyone, and only the elect of God, only God's family, will bear a cross. That's all. Boy, this, I know this is awful hard for some people, but without it, you're not going to heaven. You have to have a cross. You have to be persecuted. Do you know that's why people don't, that's why they quit the truth, is this daily cross, this, su pers this suffering persecution. I quoted this morning over there in Matthew, the 13th chapter, when persecution and affliction arises, they're offended. They, they can, oh, I like this belief. I like the Greek words. I like, the, I like all the information, but don't tell me I've got to tell my mother that Christmas is pagan, that Easter is pagan, that God doesn't love everybody. And, and, and don't tell me that I have to tell her that baptism is blood, not water. Don't tell her, oh! I don't like that. I'm quitting. You don't really believe God unless you do what He says. And you'll only do what He says if He writes it in your heart. And that's how He's going to mature us. We have to grow up. So quickened by the Spirit, quickened by the Spirit is quicken, zoopo, z-o-o-p-o-i-e-o, -O -O -E means to make alive. We're make, made alive by the Spirit so we have to die daily. Paul said, I die daily in 1 Corinthians 15, 29. I die daily. We have to die daily. Otherwise, we don't belong to God. These preachers up and down the street, they lie. They don't say this. They don't tell you you have to take a cross and die or you cannot follow Christ. That is belief, isn't it? Belief is obedience. That's what they said in the first century. Faith is the noun. Belief is the verb. Faith and believe is obedience to God. Faith cometh by hearing. Hear and obey the same word in the Greek and the Hebrew. So you have to obey God to have faith. You can't believe something and not do it, do you? You learn two times two is four, and two times three is six, and two times four is eight, and two times eight, two times five is ten, and two times six is twelve. And when they, when you grow up, you say, I don't like the multiplication tables when I balance my checkbook. I want more money in the bank, so I'm not going to subtract the way I do. I, I, I hate subtraction, and I hate these, the arithmetic. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust arithmetic to my, so I can get a bigger balance in my checkbook. That ain't going to put more money in your account. Is it? When I, subtract two for, when I subtract five from ten, I get nine. I want more money in my account. Well, that won't put it there. You can sit there and lie to yourself and fool yourself all day long. It won't help you. Will it? So quickened by the Spirit, that's being made alive after dying. Come to life after dying, that's the word anastasis, a resurrection. That's resurrection. So resurrection, how often is that? That's daily because you die daily. How long does it take to